Hi guys, uh, my name is Sanjay Gupta, I'm a consultant cardiologist in York and uh, today again I have uh, um, a great pleasure in introducing Dr. Simon Smale who's a consultant gastroenterologist. Me and Simon, we work very closely with each other and um, one of the questions a lot of people write to me about uh, on my videos is this connection between the stomach and the heart and uh, I'm very fortunate that I have Simon and Simon um, is a very um, well-read gastroenterologist uh, and I was keen to explore this connection between the stomach and the heart and if you could also Simon just talk to us a little bit about the vagus nerve yep. because a lot of people have mentioned the vagus nerve so what do you think is there a connection between the stomach and the heart or are they two separate systems because a lot of guys say to me uh, when they go to see their doctor they say oh it's your stomach nothing to do with your heart okay or, oh, yeah. it's your heart, nothing to do with your stomach. So I think there's no doubt that, that first of all, the heart and the esophagus are quite close. When you go down the esophagus endo endoscoping, you can see the atrium, uh, you know, abutting the mucosa. It's, you can see it's the only about four seat. millimeters away. Yeah, it's not far. It's and not can, far. do you ever find that when you're going down, you can actually irritate the back of the heart? Okay, so I think there's a, that, 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 for me, I think that's more likely to be a nervous response. So as we mentioned, the vagus nerve innovates, so in other words, supplies both the heart and the gullet. And there are some common pathways that go up from both those organs up to um, a, a, a collection of nerves just below the um, base of the skull and there are common pathways from uh, that collection of nerves up into the brain which may be why it's difficult to tell heart pain from gullet pain sometimes because they're actually very similar and they're following the same path. So if they have the same nerve supply affectation of one system could affect the other? Yes yeah, certainly and that's true for, ner for messages going up but it's also true for messages coming down, I guess, potentially okay. too. So uh, we recognise that people having endoscopy, for example, often have uh, a change in heart rhythm. It either gets commonly gets faster or slower, but also um, you can have change in rhythm in terms of some people going to atrial fibrillation. Gosh, so even. when you're actually and looking down the food pipe... probably vagal stimulation. When you put this tube down the food pipe to look at the food pipe, yeah. you can actually alter the rate of the heart yeah. and the rhythm and can actually push yeah. people into yeah, atrial yeah. fibrillation. How interesting. Okay. Um, not commonly. I not commonly. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other connections between the stomach and the heart? So I think that it's also true that uh, emotional con context has a huge influence on how um, we respond in terms of what, how we perceive what's going on in our viscera. So uh, a chap called Kazim Aziz has done an enormous amount of work around looking at how emotional context affects um, visceral sensation, so how we perceive what's going on in our gullet. So what you're saying is it could just be that they're both responding to an emotional stressor yeah, of some sort. very much so. So and we call it a gut feeling, yes, because you know the gut yeah. has more nerves in it than 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 the brain. Ah, so if you get anxious, for example, that would not only affect that feeling, and that's why maybe is that why people complain of butterflies and yeah. the stomach. Butterflies okay, so, being that kind of so that's really so butterflies is is an emotional response in your gut, and and you know people also complain of a fullness, of bloating when they're stressed, and that's because naturally. Uh, when you eat a meal, the stomach relaxes at the top end in the fundus mm -hmm. and becomes more motile in the bottom end to empty. Mm -hmm. But when you're stressed, it relaxes less well, so it kind of tightens up, mm -hmm. and it empties less well, and so, of course, you feel fuller sooner, Gosh. which is why you can't eat so much when you're feeling anxious. How interesting. And I guess the fourth... Um Fourth thing is probably uh, inflammation, and if you're in pain from your stomach because reflux is so common, that may cause inflammation within the body, and that could cause palpitations. So, if people have uh, reflux, they can get a soft gel spasm, and mm -hmm. as we talked about previously, the the uh, if you get a soft gel spasm, which is a pain from your gullet as a result of increased pressure, you can get as a consequence changes in your heart tracing in response to that. So whether it's actually the inflammation or whether it's the neurohormonal response, I think is up for discussion and further research, yeah. but it's really interesting. Wow, so this is great, thank you so much. Um, I think it's quite nice for those people out there who are finding it difficult to convince their doctors that there may be a stomach uh, heart connection 
to listen to you yeah. and your expertise. And I guess it's quite nice that there's a cardiologist and yeah. a gastroenterologist. We talk to each other. And we actually agree with each other, which is <laughs> unusual. <laughs> so, excellent. So, Simon, could you quickly tell us a little bit about the More Than Just Medicine um, um, initiative that you've launched, which was featured yeah, yeah. in the okay. press? So, so it's a... Um, a group of us, dietitian Sanjay, um, Tom, exercise professional, myself, um, see lots of people for whom their disease is either exacerbated or brought on by their lifestyle choices. Mm. And I think we're all on that journey where you know we all know things that we could do better in terms of making healthy choices. I certainly have that. And in terms of the whole uh, healthcare community, I think we spend in the UK about £40 billion a year on lifestyle related disease or disease that's exacerbated by lifestyle and yet somehow our current um, provision doesn't doesn't seem able particularly well in certain areas to help people with that change so certainly not in my gastroenterological practice it's difficult and so what we wanted to do is provide a a, a platform whereby we're going to try and empower and educate people through videos like this but also provide some written material uh, we're working on providing a, a free web portal that people will be able to access on things like sleep and stress and smoking and alcohol just to give them help with where to go and, and how they might prepare for all making better choices and then we're also running lifestyle and behavior change programs to help people with and at risk of chronic disease they're paid for at the moment but we're seeking um funding, funding nhs commissioning um and and we're in that process so we really want to you know, we want to make a difference. So I guess the strength of something like this is, for example, if someone is overweight and they're diabetic and they have high blood pressure, they could come and enroll yeah, yeah. in a program and they will see a consultant like me yep. or you and they will see a dietitian, um, dietitian and, and, and we'll and all be sitting together yeah, with the patient. And, and, and with them, we'll work, we'll out, work out what they want, you know, what the choices might be that they could make yeah. better and what we can do to try and help them make those choices. So if their exercise is good but their diet is bad, then they get more time. Well, look at the reducing their salt or, you know, uh, eating less saturated fat and, and we Great. can have all of that. And the idea that the patient is setting the partner. goals. Yeah, the patient well, is a partner with all these people. The and patient's the most around. important bit. That, that's really interesting. Thank you so much. If you get a chance, please visit the uh, More Than Just Medicine website, www.morethanjustmedicine.co.uk. Um, if you have um, any comments, please don't hesitate to um, uh, drop us a comment uh, after this video. And we'll do another video. Where as soon as we've got our, our free portal up and running, we'll do another video yeah, and, yeah, and, let, and let people know what that is. And maybe, what Simon, at some point, you, we could do a video on any tips or tricks you may have to try and help people with their vagal nerve, yeah, yeah. their vagal nerve issues. Thank so, you so much. Great. Thank you. Thanks.